Hi everyone, this is Mrs. Giesbrecht with you here today. Since for week five we don't have school on Friday, I've created an optional recording for you to go over 2.1, 2.01 and 2.02. So your week five essential question, again this is for five points of extra credit and I'm asking that you stay tuned later in the session to see how you will earn those five points of extra credit. So this week is all about different kinds of shapes and what formulas to apply. So last week in our session, if you came in person, I gave you a formula sheet. And if you were attending online, I also came out you the formula sheet. So keep those handy, but I want to go ahead and give these all a label. So the yellow one here on the right, that would be a cylinder. The ball in the middle is a sphere. Down here on the lower right, we have a cone. Here's a cube, and this one is considered a pyramid. So pyramids and cones, they both come to a point. So let's just take a peek at some of their characteristics. So they're both coming to this kind of a point, but what makes them different is a cone has a round base, right, a circular base, and a pyramid would have a different, some kind of a different shape on the bottom. It could be a square, it could be a triangle, in other words, just not a circle. Circles are cones. Pyramids would be anything else. So it's important to recognize what shape you're dealing with in order to know what formula you need to use to solve your problem. So let's think for just a minute, and I know that you're not here with me live, so just try this on your own. But which objects that, that I showed you on the last page would have two bases? So not a sphere, since that's circular. Not a cone, because that only has one circular base. Not a sphere. Pyramids also come to a point, so it's not pyramids. So the correct answer would be D, cylinders and prisms. So let's come back one second. I called this a cube, but these can also be called prisms. So prisms always have two bases, a top and a bottom that match. So on the flip side, which objects can only have one base? And the correct answer would be B. So a cone and a pyramid only have one base and they both come to a point at their opposite end. Now which objects have a slant height? So this is kind of a new vocabulary word for us today. Slant height really means like it sounds. It's a height that's not going to come down in the middle of the figure to form a 90 degree with the middle. Instead, it's going to be slanted on the edge of your figure. So in this case, my correct answer is cones and pyramids have slant height because their shapes are slanted. So the slant height would be the one down the outside edge. The regular height is going to be the one going down the middle. So this would be what we traditionally call our H. Slant height on the edge of our shape is now going to be depicted with the letter L. And I usually put it in cursive because if you just draw an L like that, it kind of looks like a 1 on your shape that you're drawing on your paper. So if you just want to get in the habit of using the cursive L, it will just help you keep straight that you're not talking about the number 1. So we have some formulas. We're going to have different formulas if we have two base objects one base object or zero base objects. Our only type of zero base object that we're dealing with this unit would be spheres. So just keep this sheet handy. Keep this formula sheet handy of your notes. And before you go today, I will share this PowerPoint with you so that way you can have a copy of these slides. And what we're going to do for the remainder of this session is practice each kind for finding surface area and volume. So I kind of drew this already for you, but here's just a more clear picture. So on a pyramid, P still stands for perimeter of the base, so P would be the outside edges all added together. R means radius from the middle to the edge. Height always comes straight down your figure, making a 90 degree with the middle. And then this L right here stands for your slant height. 
Okay, so let's try a few together. Find the surface area and volume of this shape. So the first question is, here are my formulas. Which ones am I going to use? So let's identify, am I working with a one-based object or a two-based object? I'm working with a two-based object. So let's start with surface area. Surface area is two times the area of the base plus perimeter times the height. So let's fill in what we know. So big B stands for area of the base. How do you pick out which one is the base? We've done this before. The base is the one where you have two that match. So that would be your top triangle and your bottom triangle. So if I want the area of that triangle, we know areas of triangles are one half base times height. So it would be one half the two lengths that are part of the triangle, right? Here and here. Now I want the perimeter of the base and then the height of my whole figure. So this height I can fill in right now. The height of my whole figure is 2. The tricky part is going to be figuring out what can I put in there for my perimeter. So the perimeter of the base, let's highlight it in another color. Okay, so I'm going to highlight this P. So we're talking what value am I going to be putting in there for my perimeter? Well, it's going to be the 3 plus the 4 plus whatever this side is. How am I going to find that third side? What do we do to find the third side of any right triangle? We have to use Pythagorean theorem. So 9 plus 16 equals x squared. x squared equals 25. So my x would be 5. So my missing piece of the puzzle is a 5. So 3 plus 4 plus 5 would be my perimeter, so that would be 12. By the time I finish solving this and simplifying this, I get 1 half of 12. Half of 12 is 6. 6 times 2 is 12. Plus 12 times 2 is 24, so I get 36 is my surface area, so we will say inches squared. Make sure all the steps on the screen make sense to you. If not, press pause, maybe rewind. Now we're going to move on to volume. Volume equals big B times H. So the area of the base, we just found that a minute ago. It's 1 half base times height. So 1 half of 3 times 4 is 6. And the height of your whole figure is 2. So my volume would be 12 inches cubed. Moving on, let's try two more examples today. Find surface area and volume. So again, looking at my two formulas over here, these are for one base objects, these are for two base objects. So looking at my shape, I recognize it's a two base object. So let's find surface area first. So two times the area of my base. Now, hmm, which one is my base? We said earlier that base is always the one that has two matching or congruent sides. You have lots of choices on the one that you could pick for the base. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and pick this bottom one right here. If you picked another one, it's not wrong. We will end with the exact same answer. So the area of my base is 10 times 5, which would be 50. Big P stands for perimeter of the base, so that would be 10 plus 5, plus 10, plus 5. Think about if you're okay with what I did. 10, 5, 10, 5. Times the height of your whole shape. So the height of my whole shape would be the 2. See how whenever we're dealing with this H by itself, that is always the height of your whole shape, meaning it cannot be the number touching your base. So the 10 and the 5 were part of my base. Your height is never the number that's part of the base. Height is always the other number. So let's continue working. I get 100 plus, by the time I add those together, I get 30 times 2. So 100 plus 60 equals 160 meters squared. 
let's try volume. Volume equals area to base times height. So the area of my base was 50. My height was 2. So I get 100 meters cubed for my volume. We have one last one to go. You guys are doing awesome. Okay, so here we go. Find surface area and volume. So let's identify which formulas we're going to be using. This time I have a one-based object. I just have the square at the bottom, so that's going to be considered my base. Okay, so there's my base right there. So let's try plugging in our formulas and see what we know. Surface area equals big B plus one half PL. So big B, area of the base, that would just be 24 times 8, right, because it's a rectangle. So I'm just going to put in 24 times 8 going to drop down that one half. Perimeter of the base, that's also easy, right? We add all four sides. So 24 plus 8 and another 24 plus 8 because I have to go all the way around my rectangle. 24, 8, 24, 8. Now, L stands for not your regular height, not the 10. L stands for slant height. In this particular example, they don't give you the slant height. They are not showing you that. Watch where your slant height would be. I'm changing the pink here. So your slant height would be from the top down to the side edge. My pink line is my slant height. So how am I going to find that? Well, watch what I'm going to do. I'm changing this into a triangle. Let me redraw that pink triangle down here so that it's a little easier to see. It is a 90. We know that the height is 10. I don't know my slant height. Now what number am I going to put down here? We know that the whole way across is 24. So what would it be from the middle to the edge? So again, we know the whole way across is 24. What would it be from the middle to the edge? It would be a 12. So Pythagorean theorem. 10 squared plus 12 squared equals x squared. 100 plus 144 is x squared. 244 is x squared. Square root both sides, and we get that x would equal the decimal, so I'm just going to round, 15.6. So what's my slant height? What's my L? 15.6. So I'm going to fill that in. Let me change back to... I'm just going to put it in purple, 15.6. So here would be my formula. So once I work it out, 24 times 8, 192, plus 1 half, all of these added together gives me 64 times 15.6. By the time I work it all out, you end up with 691.2 inches squared. So the only trick is that sometimes they don't give you slant height. If they do not give it to you, you need to draw in your right triangle. You're solving for the hypotenuse. You're solving for that c squared side. So you do a squared times b squared equals c squared. In my picture, I gave you all the way across was 24, which means that halfway across would be 12. So that's how I knew my two sides of my triangle. Let's move into the volume formula. So my volume formula is one-third base times height. So again, the area of my base is just going to be that 24 times 8. And this time, it wants a regular H. So see how the volume has regular H? The surface area has the slant height. So I want regular H, which it gives it to me in the picture, 10. So when I do one-third times 24 times 8 times 10, all of those are multiplied together, so I can do them in any order I want. I end up with, I'm going to do the 24 times 8 first, 182. And when I multiply those three together, 640 inches cubed. So these were just a couple quick practice problems that will take you through 2.01 and 2.02. .02. 
which is finding surface area and volume of pyramids, prisms, et cetera, et cetera. So your week five essential question is, what is the difference between slant height and regular height? And how do you find slant height if I give you the regular height? So like on a picture, I know you're not going to draw a picture in the Dropbox, but tell me, where do I find slant height? Where do I find regular height? And then like in the last problem, if I give you regular height, like say regular height is 6, how would you find that slant height right there? How would you do that problem? We did this in the last example. So go ahead and answer this in the week 5 Dropbox and you will receive 5 points of extra credit. So I hope this was helpful. Have a great week.